What's good, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Let It Go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, please hit that subscribe button. Roll the 2K subscribers. Now, I'm coming at you guys with a little different video, bro. We, re we reacting to... I don't know why I got tongue tied. We reacting to this submarine thing. Like, what really happened with it? Because, like, bro, I don't even know what's happening. It was trending all over Twitter. Then, all of a sudden, they said they had, like, 11 hours left of breathable oxygen. Then they said it imploded, all type of shit. So, yeah, man, we're going to get to the bottom of this now, bro. So, yeah, man, without further ado, y'all, grab your snacks, grab your popcorn, grab your chips. You feel me? Let's get right into this thing, bro. CBS got us. So the search continues for a mini sub that disappeared on a trip to view the wreckage of the Titanic. Mm -hmm. Five people are on board. The Coast Guard in Boston says that the sub lost contact Sunday, about an hour Damn. and 45 minutes into its dive. So for Damn. more on the missing uh, submersible uh, and rescue efforts, we want to bring in Butch Hendrick. He's joining us now. What I'm saying is, okay, maybe I'm a, you know, I'm not the smartest person in the world. You feel me? But like, shouldn't they have like a tether or some shit, like a backup tether or something? So like when it goes down, you feel me? Like if everything fails, they could just pull that hole back up. Like, wouldn't that be like something? Wouldn't that be a smart idea, bro? I don't know. I'm not no expert at nothing, so you feel me? It's just an idea. I'm just throwing an idea. So, yeah, man, let's keep going. President and <clears throat> founder of Lifeguard Systems, which conducts dive training for public safety officers. Mm -hmm. And he's not involved in this specific rescue, though, but has been instructing uh, dive rescues for over 35 years. So, we sort of have been loosely calling this a submarine, but it's not a submarine, it's a submersible. It needs to sort of, you get, once it's in the water, it can navigate, <laughs> but it's not sort of independently <clears throat> able to propel itself kind of around, right? Am yeah. I, I hope I'm saying it properly. This seems like an incredible complex rescue because they don't even know, to start things <laughs> out, they don't know if this submersible is under the water or on top of the water. What? Yeah, it's going to be difficult because if we know that it entered the water at a given time, we know that it had a big... Okay, so that's the name of it. Titan Submersible. So it's not a submarine. And I guess the company name is Ocean Gate. Ocean, some yeah, Ocean Gate, I guess. So it's branded on it. So it's not a submarine, it's a submersible. I guess it's different. I don't know. Life support system for 96 hours. Mm -hmm. And we know its project was to go to the bottom at 12,500 feet to be at the Titanic. That Wait, so they was going to go see the Titanic? Like, what? Bro, who volunteers to pay their hard-earned money to go down, all the way down, damn near to the bottom of the ocean to go see a sunken ship? Like, come on, bro. And there's so many conspiracy theories, bro. Like, I done heard everything. Like, oh, they trying to make a Titanic part two and all type of crazy shit. But who in their right mind would do something like that, bro? You going all the way down to the bottom of the ocean to go look to go see the Titanic. That don't make no sense. Approximately 90 minutes after its launch, entering the water, it lost communication. It's very possible that by that period of time, it was already on the bottom, getting ready to view the Titanic, and it could have gotten itself entangled somewhere. Entangled, it's possible that its communication antenna was dislodged, broken, and they lost communication. Damn. And that they would still be reasonably possibly with another 40 hours of life support based on the information given damn the 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 other scenario which was uh put forth by uh a cbs sunday morning correspondent david pogue who actually uh was in that submersible uh, a few years ago doing a story is uh, that something horribly uh, went horribly wrong there it was an infrastructure issue with the craft itself um and as you know, the pressures at that at those depths are incredible. In fact, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Most most military type submarines uh, generally don't dive any deeper than uh, than uh, 1,500 uh, feet. We're talking about uh, almost 12,000 feet. I think mm -hmm. that the Titanic is at the bottom of, of the ocean there, and this might have happened at 9,000 feet. Which wait, so the military doesn't go past 1,500 feet? 
y'all paid y'all money to go 12,000 feet under the water when the military won't even go that deep? Like, come on. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an expert, so I wouldn't know about that, but I wouldn't pay my money to do something like that. It was where they lost communications. With the, at 9,000 feet, I can't imagine the pressure on uh, uh, on the submersible there, and so it could have imploded. It could have it could have imploded. More likely, it could have leaked and flooded. Right. One of the things to kind of keep in mind: we see vehicles, automobiles that go in the water all the time on the news. A vehicle that goes in the water near shore is in 10 feet of water. That pressure, to bro. So they paid all that money. Just to be bunched up like that, like we're rest in peace to. What is if oh, I'm not saying they you feel me they passed away, but if they do pass away, you know rest in peace to them. I'm not trying to disrespect them or you know discredit their knowledge or anything like that, but like that's just that's crazy, bro. It's just like a such a small space. And there ain't nothing really to do. Differential over surface pressure is about five pounds per square inch, and you cannot open the doors. The pressure is so great, we can't open a door until the water floods the interior. This, at 12,000 feet, it's 5,000 psi greater than surface pressure. Damn. So the pressure of its, its own pressure, there's no re opening a gate, there's no opening a window, there's no making an interactive lock. What we do look at is if it had a small leak, it's possible that the electrical system has been affected. Right. And if that happened, then it may be again that they could still be alive, interior, breathing, and hoping for someone to come and get them. Now, it, 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 sorry, the other thing that we mentioned is that they still are sort of trying to determine if perhaps it's on the surface. This has submersible has several mechanisms to propel itself up to the surface mm -hmm. um and when i first heard that i thought and the other thing is they can't get out even if they're on the surface they can't get out because it's bolted shut from the outside what? so it's important to find them but i thought to myself well if it's on the surface can't you just fly over i mean why can't they just visually see whether or not it's on the surface could weather conditions be making it difficult? Well, it's also the side, the surface area that they're searching it's is the massive. size of Connecticut or or the country of Ireland, is right. what I understand. But you would have a, yeah. a ballpark area where they would be headed at least, right? It, I mean, what would, what would make it difficult to identify them on the surface? Well, right now, as I understand it, the winds are moving between 28 and 30 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. The sea is anything from, a, from two to three foot high mm -hmm. with white caps. So it could be difficult, but you are looking at the individuals, the Coast Guard, United States, Canada, et cetera, that are out there, okay. they're trained on how to see this. They're flying fixed wings aircraft. They're, they're able to fly a hundred miles square without in no time whatsoever. We are looking at the potential that if it drifted in current- Wait, so hold on, am I tripping, is that? no time whatsoever oh that's probably like an example of some shit i was about to say we are looking at the potential that if it drifted in current it could be several hundred miles from where it entered the water but again looking at a fixed wing aircraft and the highly trained personnel that are in those aircraft searching they know how to look for this they'll be look, looking for any they've also got equipment on deck that'll allow them to suddenly realize there's something on the surface besides the visual eye. Most likely, it's not at the surface. Mm -hmm. Most likely, it's subsurface. And we'd like to think that it, they still have 40 hours of life support. So being positive, and I'm sure that that's what our, our Coast Guards and Canadians are doing, is telling their crew, we still have approximately 35 to 40 hours of life support. We still, this is still a potential rescue. Keeping it positive will keep the crew at all levels working hard. As soon as we go to, well, we're not going to find it. It's over. The whole potential of the morale drops. When morale drops, we lose a whole massive part of that rescue. And again, you have to say that the Coast Guard 
that's what they train for. They know how to keep their crew positive right up until they realize. But what kind of, I guess, math and science goes into trying to calculate based on conditions, based on the, the, the water, based on the weather, yes. given that this, this uh, craft does not propel itself, what kind of calculations go into trying to find something that is drifting in water? I mean, human, human beings from the very beginnings of, our, of, of civilization have been able to navigate the ocean surface um, yes. using math and science. And I wonder yes. what kind of math yes. and science goes into trying to figure out things underwater. First of all, this unit cannot travel like that we think of a boat or a vessel that can move across the surface, but it does have mobility. It has the ability to rotate, rise and fall in the water column. It has, if you will, it has the ability to do minor motions with small motors. It just can't propel itself quickly in the ocean. When we start to look at current, the moment I think of a one knot current moves at 100 foot per minute. Mm. So if it's caught in a current that's running at six to eight knots, it's moving six to 800 foot per minute. Wow. The wow. Coast Guard knows that. The Coast Guard has already put out their own beacons what would have helped is if the submersible had had releasable transmitters that could have come to the surface and the moment they realized we were in trouble, the trackers could have said, okay, this unit came to the surface here, here's what the current and wind have been doing. The Coast Guard would have put their own trackers in, retraced it, and been able to start to follow its, its travel point. So if it's drifting midwater, Bro, if I paid two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and they don't have like those transmitters, like bro, that's basically theft. Like they done stole their money. Like I should be the safety. I should have everything. I'm talking about life, life vests. Uh, bro, everything. If I'm paying that much money just to get on a, whatever it is just to go way up under the water to see the Titanic. Like, ooh, what type of fathers they give? I don't even know. Let's keep going. The current, they know how to track speed. They'll do what's called fetch and track. They'll be tracking it based on current. Okay. And then they will narrow it down from there. So far, would you have gotten into this submersive? You don't no. have to answer, but I'm curious. No, I would not. <laughs> See, we think alike, bro. You know, come on now. Ain't nobody finna, oh, I'm about to get in a submersive. It's not a submarine, it's a submersive. We about to go all the way down 12,000 feet to see the Titanic. Like, bro, who, who thinks of this? One of the things that I do believe is important and we understand, if you had gone on this trip, you would not be just put into this submersible and now we're going for a ride. You would have been shown. You would have been shown how to use some of the emergency processing inside the unit. So, if there's pieces that it's not one person trying to control everything, you'd have probably spent multiple hours. And then I heard that it was being controlled by a goddamn Amazon controller or some shit like that, bro. The internet is undefeated. Shit, just crazy, bro. I just I hope they get some, that hope. I hope that they get saved, like all the people that's there. You feel me? I hope they're able to reunite with their families and just learn from their mistakes. Like, hey, next time I'm not about to go spend my money on something. I'm not about to go spend my money on something that's going to leave me in this position. Simple. Learning how to do little pieces that would make it safer for you. The concept that it does not have releasable tracking buoys. It does not have a backup transmitter that would allow you to emergency, no matter what happened, it would be able to put out its own underwater signal that the Coast Guard and our Navy could find. And as you said earlier, our general submarines are not designed to go to this depth. There's not another unit sitting 700. So basically, this was like a test. This is crazy. Dude, he talks kind of, I don't know. 
he just repeats itself a lot. But he's saying basically that they're not designed to go that that deep. And so it's basically like an experiment. They basically just putting them down there. And I guess, I don't know, you get you just gave up all that money. I heard they paid like $250,000 to go all the way down there, 13,000 feet up under the water. And this guy's saying that normally they don't go that deep. They don't even go half that deep, let alone 13,000 feet up under the water. Like, that's, that's crazy miles away that can come out here and go save them on the surface quietly then when she descends okay. there's debris across it all right y'all that's the end of that video y'all please like comment and subscribe for more lit content it's your boy lady go i'm out peace